Hello everybody, today's experiment is about titration. We're gonna use these chemicals and I just want to let you know that my amazing student Mohammed Abdrabo is gonna do this experiment, so say hi for him. The first part in our experiment is pipe 25 cubic centimeter FFA1 into conical flask. We use this desk here and the pipe filler. You really must be at the zero completely and then you start to empathize it to the uh, conical flask and Actually, you can do a little bit shaking issues in this case to make sure that nothing left in the pipette. And the question now, what is the second step? The second step is fill pewter with FA2. Filling the pewter, make sure that it's closed down there in a crossed way. And you can use a filter funnel and make sure to have a reading accurately. The second part is adding some indicator droplets. And sometimes we use seven like drops to five drops, yeah. And then start carrying the titration. Put in your mind, one of your hands must be in the valve and the second hand must shake the flask because you need to continue with shaking to distribute the chemicals equally and then have accurate results. I did this experiment and I recorded in a slow motion. So you just notice that there is a change in color. No need to know the color that your indicator will change to as long as you have a change in color, so never mind in this case. You're gonna do this experiment uh, first time like as a rough titration, and the rough titration indicates like no need to be very accurate in this case, but it gives you indications about your coming results. You have to draw a nice table, I'm gonna show you how to do it, and put in your mind the difference between your results must be 0 0.2 cubic centimeter. So let's go back again to the exam paper, and as we, as we can see, the paper that we're going to solve is um, May, June 2018, variant 3. So let's start reading the question carefully. The question target here, we're going to make a titration process, okay, in order to, to determine whether the acid that we use is monoprotic or diprotic. So what is the meaning of diprotic or monoprotic acid? Generally speaking, if we have H2SO4, once it dissociates in water, it gives you 2H plus plus SO4 negative 2. So in this case, each one molecule of sulfuric acid leads to give you 2 H's in this case. So we can conclude that the sulfuric acid is diprotic. And di means 2, and the protic belongs to proton, and we remember the proton is H plus, and that's why it's called in this name. And the monoprotic like HCl, since it dissociates in water and gives H plus and Cl negative, and we notice that each one mole leads to produce one H plus. Let's start reading the question. The question says, you have um, acids are defined as a substances that can donate hydrogen ions H plus to bases. Monoprotic acids contain one H plus that can be donated per molecule. Diprotic acid contains two H plus that can be donated per molecule. You will determine by titration method whether Z acid yeah, is monoprotic or diprotic. So technically Z is going to be reacted with the base. And from the base, we'll determine the number of moles. So put in your mind Z is an acid that leads to produce uh, H plus and the number of H plus in this case is unknown and that's why I have to donate X in addition to um, the remaining salt let's say W and actually I don't care about it in here what we care about here is the number of X in this case so how can I determine the number of H's uh, in this titration process by dividing the moles of H plus over the moles of Z in here so first of all, let's read the question carefully. I have to get rid of all of this in here, okay? And uh, as we notice that FA1 is a solution that contains acidic material, and this is the concentration, 80 gram per cubic decimeter, and the FA2's concentration is given to us, and actually it's a base, which is sodium hydroxide. So first of all, we're going to make the titrations. You watch the, the steps of titrations. We got the first one, which is the rough titration. And by the way, the rough titration is not involved in the calculations because it's rough, right? And it gives you just indications about your experiment titrations, values, and etc. But put in your mind, you should have a table 
that is labeled perfectly. You should write the initial period reading in here. You should have two decimal places for all of the volumes that you write. You have final period reading and you have to put the unit in this case. And this is the same thing for tighter in the, the tighter is the final reading minus the initial reading and must be any cubic centimeter. And that's why you will put your value in here. And after determining, or let's say, after doing the rough titrations, you will start doing, uh, let's say, three titrations at least uh, in order to get a good consistent results in this case. So you can have a, a number for these values. You have one, two, and a three. Put in your mind, you have to do them with respect to two decimal places in all readings. You should have labeling well for your table. And you should have a difference in your values that is acceptable to be not more than 0.2 cubic centimeter in your results. So in this case, we notice that I have 27.6 and 27.7, and these two values are nice. So I have to tell the, the person who checks my, my paper that I need this value in here and this value. So we take these two values and we ignore this one here because we have a difference between uh, 0.9 and 0.6, which is 0.3, and actually it's a big. Uh, difference and actually there's a difference between 0.9 and 0.7 and actually uh, we ignored that completely so what we talk here is the first and the second value and you have to draw the tick uh, marks to tell the examiner that you choose them and then we have to go to b in here b says from your accurate titration results obtain a suitable value for volume fa2 to be used in your calculations in order to make your results very consistent you have to take the average of these values. And that's why the tick one here uh, will be taken as in their values. And we take this one and this one. We talk the average of the two values, divide them over two. This is the volume that we're going to use in our calculation. Okay, now let's go to uh, branch C. Branch C says, calculate the number of moles of sodium hydroxide presents in volume FA2. Actually, what we measured and calculated was the volume of Fa2, and we need the moles. So you just remember the relationship, which is C equals N over V, and the number of moles is equal to the concentration multiplied by volume. We have the volume. Don't forget to change the volume from a cubic centimeter into cubic decimeter by dividing over 1,000. And we brought this number from in here. Remember that? The concentration is given to me. the first page of... Um, of the exam in here is very important uh, since it contains a lot of uh, critical information that you may need later. We got the concentration and now here we have the moles of sodium hydroxide that present in Fa2, I mean like the moles present in 27.67. Perfect. The second part says deduce the number of H plus present at 25 cubic centimeter of Fa2. Since we did a titration process then the moles of H plus are the same as OH uh, moles, and that's why it will be the two answers are identical in this case. And now let's go to the double uh, I. The question says we have to calculate the number of H plus present in one cubic decimeter. Okay, we calculated the moles of H plus in. 25 cubic centimeter but the question now needs the number of moles in one cubic decimeter so we're going to make a relationship each 25 cubic centimeter contains this number of moles how many moles of h plus we have in 1000 cubic centimeter and put in your mind the one cubic decimeter contains thousand 1000 cubic centimeter Okay, so from the relationship in here, we got that the number of moles of H plus in one cubic decimeter is 0 0.114. And put in your mind in your answers in here must be in two to three significant figures. And you have a mark in that, by the way. Triple I says FA1 contains this concentration of Z. And you have the MR of Z in here. We need to calculate the moles of acid itself. We just remember something. Z is the acid. One mole of Z gives us a unknown number of H plus. 
So actually, we calculated the moles of H plus in one cubic decimeter. And now it's time to calculate the number of moles of acid in one cubic decimeter. So how can I do that? Put in your mind you were given two numbers. The first one, which is 6.10 gram per cubic decimeter, which is for Z. This is the density. And the another one, which is the MR. And the MR has a unit of a gram per mole. So you just remember, the question needs to calculate the number of moles of Z in one cubic decimeter. In other words, we need it to be in mole cubic decimeter. That's way. So we can... Just like manipulating the number, we can divide 6.10 over 126. And the number of moles, as we can see here, the grams, the grams canceling each other. The mole just go up here and this decimeter get down. And you will have this value in this case. So this value, 0.0484, is mole per decimeter cubic. Okay. And now we have the moles of H plus and z so if you divide the moles of h plus over the div over the moles of z you will have this number in here so this number indicates that it's close to be diaprotic rather than monoprotic since you have number two in here and we conclude that the acid is diaprotic